Ian's actually written a game review, uh, something that he's been playing, and it's not Car Wash Simulator or Powered Wash Simulator or How to Make Your Tea Simulator. It's uh, it, it's something else completely, Ian. I, I, the, there was a car wash simulator that came out recently, so that was quite close to hitting the, the mark. But no, on, on this occasion, it's a game called Extra Primal. Um, and if you like nothing more than teaming up with a bunch of friends to slaughter a relentless horde of rampaging dinosaurs who fall out of the sky at the behest of a surreal AI entity, then this could be the game for you. Because let's face it, who doesn't enjoy killing hordes of endless dinosaurs for fun? Um, it's available on... Uh, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and it comes courtesy of the creator of the Dino Crisis series, which some of you might have heard of. Uh, and although this game isn't technically a part of the Dino Crisis franchise, it's not exactly a stretch to see those kind of arcade influences at play here. Um, one thing I'll do, I'll go against Norm. Normally I'll start with the positives and then drop the negatives in, but I'll start with the negatives, or rather the, the limitations of the game to start off with. First of all, it's multiplayer only, so there's no single plan campaign to speak of. And it also means that, you know, you need a constant online connection to play it. So if you've got a sketchy broadband and you keep dropping out, you're going to get kicked back to the game menu uh, quite a lot. Um, but it does come with cross-play on other platforms. Um, but if you want to hook up with friends, another limitation is that it only applies if they're on the same Xbox or PlayStation network. So if you're on Xbox Series X, you can play with Xbox One gamers, but you can't play with PS5, PS4 and PS5 gamers and vice versa. Um, the other thing to add is that there's currently only one game mode for it. It's a, a mode called uh, Dino Survival, um, which is basically a five versus five PVE race to the finish line. Um, there's a few PVP elements thrown in for good measure, if you like shooting people rather than just dinosaurs. Um, but essentially, um, yeah, it, it's it's two teams racing against each other. The first people, first team to complete the missions wins basically but it doesn't matter if you win or lose all the time you're constantly leveling up and you're evolving um that it does mean that therefore you know there's only 12 game modes or game or game mission types to, to that get rotated which does mean there's going to be a lot of repetition limits presumably all mode. of them involve killing a healthy quantity <laughs> of dinosaurs it's pretty much i mean yeah there's they, they flowering yes. up in some slight variants but basically just Pods open up in the sky, dinosaurs drop out, and it's like, right, go kill them. First, first thing you can do with. And it's, I mean, what? It, it's a simple premise, and you'd think you'd get bored of it after a while. And to be fair, there is a lot, there's a bit of a grind, there is a bit of a repetition, but it's quite hard to get bored of because it is just that simple trigger clenching arcade fun. Um, it does come, there's like a, a choice of 10 exosuits. You basically get to dress up in mech suits to do it, which makes it, you know, even more empowering for some. And it's nice because there's quite a mix of them as well. So you get they all come with their own unique abilities and sort of so you can develop your own style. Um, people that play a lot of games will be familiar with like the assault class, uh, the tank class, and the support classes, which these suits kind of uh, all kind of factor into. Um, and then so you can kind of tailor things your own way. Like I say, they come with their unique abilities you can unlock. So you can kind of fine tune up to ten basically different characters depending on how you want to play. Uh, and the good thing is, even though Good players will always level up fast and they'll be the biggest and the best. And they'll, you know, you'll walk into a gunfight at some point, be dead in a second and not know why. And it's just because that guy over there has been playing it for like four weeks and you've been playing it for four hours. Um, but it does have that kind of that nice variety where even if you are a bit rubbish, you can just kind of stand at the back and still feel like you're contributing in some way. <laughs> there's, there's always that kind of, you know, feeling of being involved. Boy, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, like the, the support class is a favourite. I found it on Battlefield 2042 and I was rubbish on that. Just being a support class, just to run around and heal people. Keep the, keep the, keep the guys who are really good in the fight. It kind of keeps you involved and, it's, and, it, and it makes you feel like you're doing Great something even if you're not really sure what you're doing. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's good fun. Um, yeah, and yeah, yeah, and that really is kind of the essence of the positives is that even though it's a bit of a grind, uh, it is still good fun for the sort of the duration of how long you decide to play it for, which does kind of factor into whether it becomes value for money. Because uh, if you want to buy it at full price, it'll cost you £50. But the plus side is it is a day one Game Pass release. So if you're on PC or Xbox and subscribe to Game Pass, uh, you can effectively play it for free. I'll put it in air quotes before people say it's not free if it's on Game Pass, but you still pay the monthly subscription fee for it. Um, so if you are on Game Pass, then it becomes a bit more of a, hey, why not? Because, like I say, it's a lot of fun either in short bursts or if you settle down. It has that nice kind of, oh, I'll just have one more match mentality to it. So 
you think you're going to play it for 10 minutes, end up playing it for three hours, and you don't really know where the time's gone. Um, one one sort of upside of it that I will think is worth giving credit to is that even though it is a multiplayer only game, Capcom have done a really nice job of kind of wrapping the package up in what feels like a single player campaign framework. By that, I mean, it's got cutscenes, it's got a load of video and audio files to unlock as means of exposition to kind of explain just why these dinosaurs are dropping out of the sky and why this rampant AI has made you travel back in time to when the dinosaurs first started dropping out. It's, I'm not going to explain the story. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> but the fact is, it doesn't have to make sense. But what Capcom has done, they've, they've kind of justified it to an extent. They've explained it. They've put some effort into making you feel like you're progressing through a story. Uh, and to help with that, what they've done, rather than just dropping all the content on you at the start, they kind of, you unlock, or things sort of develop and progress as you play through more and more matches. So at the start, you'll just be facing like, you know, a horde of angry raptors. And, you know, it's quite straightforward. But then by the time you get deeper into the game, you're fighting raptors, pterodons, a giant T-Rex will come wandering out of nowhere. You'll have carnosaurs, stegosaurus, the, the works, and it becomes absolute carnage in the, the best possible way. But it kind of escalates that up so you, you're not dropped into that it takes its time and it makes it Ian, I'm, again, I'm assuming when you say that they drop out of the sky they don't that they, it's from a safety you know they don't just sort of like turn into no, literally, sort of, it's like 10 feet above your head oh right okay fine they don't just, just sort of like yeah, it's like ice. it's like a vortex appears in the sky and so you get a bit of warning of where they're going to drop out it's not like oh, right. boom from nowhere so oh, yeah, it, that it sounds more of, reasonable. It would be more. I sorry, yeah. I was wondering actually if the danger of the dinosaurs was actually that they were dropping from several thousand feet <laughs> at speed and they were just simply <laughs> squashed. Yeah, that would be yeah. a real doubt. You spent hours and hours investing in this patch, and all of a sudden everyone gets wiped out by a T Rex just going. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, uh, well, I don't know. It could add yeah. to the fun. You can actually get to play as some of the T Rexes and some of the bigger animals as well. You've got this thing called Dominators, uh, where at various points in the match, each side will get to kind of drop a player in it's a playable uh, alpha dinosaur basically so you can roam into the other team's game while they're trying to make as fast a progress as they can through the game like you could drop a t-rex or a triceratops and go around paging through them and sort of wipe out as much of their squad as they can to slow them down so that's quite another fun little quirk of it. and it does add a tactical element as well because there's a final mission in the game where you're playing more directly alongside each other so whilst you're both trying to complete the same mission you can kind of stop and start shooting each other for fun if you like so you're kind of thinking you want to focus on shooting dinosaurs or should we focus on shooting each other what are we doing it, it's kind of it, it mixes it up quite nicely but is that is that a whoopi goldberg uh cameo in there oh. <laughs> the team, uh, the ian predates theodore rex oh does he yeah he so he does yeah, yeah. he um, won't get that you won't but, get the rest i mean you could it'd be interesting the first you could time use... in a long time i've made you feel young you could use um, the uh, game engine for Theodore X, the computer game, and frankly, I urge Capcom to, to crack on with that right now because yeah. I'd physically buy a copy. There's DLC on the way. You never know. You're not. 